Good morning, church family. Our call to worship this morning is a responsive reading. I'll be reading the bold face type, and I invite you to read uh, the plain type. Psalms 120, excuse me, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. I, the Lucas Valley. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long.
the congregation please stand? God of creation, God of imagination, God of meditation, please accept our praise as we respond to you in meditation, celebration, and consecration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is crowned him with many crowns, hymn number 223. <laughs>
Well, good morning, church. It's great to see you all here this morning. Um, just want to say, if it's your first time here, then we welcome you warmly. We're glad you came to visit us today. If you're a member here, then you know what your job is. It's to find one of the new people, uh, give them a hug, and make sure that they feel welcome today. Amen? I uh, just want to mention a couple of brief things. Um, I just got told by Pastor Mark just before the service uh, that the, if the personnel committee could meet by the piano just down here right after the service, uh, the personnel committee, could you meet right by the piano after the service? That would be great. Uh, I want to welcome, uh, a very special welcome today for um, Dr. Kilby, who has joined us from La Sierra University in, in Riverside. Uh, Dr. Kilby specializes in the area of religion and the arts, which I'm sure is very fascinating. So we're really glad you could be with us today, and we're looking forward to the message that God has given you to share with us. Um, just want to mention a couple of other announcements that we talk about every single week, and maybe you guys are sick of reading this in the bulletin, maybe you're sick of hearing it, but until we have these events full, I'm going to keep talking about them every single week. So the first one is, of course, Koinonia, which means fellowship. You're aware of this program? We have this in the chapel uh, every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. It means fellowship. Okay, fine, fine. Oh, it's in the fellowship hall. I'm being corrected here. Sorry, sorry. Okay. And don't forget, we have a meal there uh, at 6 o'clock. We have a kids program, so it's free babysitting as well. But more importantly than any of that, it really is a chance to take your discipleship to the next level. And I know I've heard from everyone who has come that they've really felt a real blessing um, through coming to that program. Now, the second one, which is a program that I'm more directly involved in, so I do know all the facts about this one, um, is, is uh, our Praxis program that takes place every Friday in the chapel at 7.30. And this is, we've called this a young adult Vespers, but really it's for anyone who's interested in coming. It's more of a contemporary service, a little bit more casual. The music's a bit more uh, contemporary in style. Shane and myself uh, give a message every week there. And again, we're just trying to create a service that feels very reflective and meaningful and just creates a really nice space in which you can worship. So I encourage you, if you're a young adult here who hasn't really connected with anyone yet, or if you want to check out something a little bit different, please do come to Praxis on Friday nights at 7.30. Again, just to reiterate, don't think of these as programs that we're trying to make you attend. Think of these as real blessings that will help you in your Christian walk. Um, on a sadder note today, um, I have to tell you that our youth leader, Shamari, will actually be leaving and moving to Texas. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very sad. Shamari, you can come up. Um, so actually today is his last Sabbath, and so Shamari, we just want to say, you know, thank you so much for all the time and effort and energy you've put into everything um, in the spiritual formation of our youth, and we'll miss your leadership, we'll miss your energetic personality, we'll miss your food, because I don't know if you know, this guy is an incredible chef, and most of all, we'll miss you. So, and we wish you the best of luck uh, in your future, and please do keep in touch. Thank you. Want to say a couple of words? Okay. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity to, I guess, help guide your youth um, closer to Jesus, and in turn, they have definitely drawn me a little bit closer. Um, I just want you to encourage the youth as they continue their walk. And I'm thankful that I got to be here for, I guess, a moment in this church's history with the family worship service where we're encouraging the youth to get up in front and do a little bit more. So I ask that you guys continue to encourage the youth, keep them in your prayers. If you see them walking around, just encourage them, talk to them, get to know them. They're a good group of kids. Thank you. And just, just before you go, here's a small uh, token of our appreciation that will help with some of the gas money to get Thank to Texas. You. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Shimari, Shimari, sh stay st st for a second. Just, I just want us to pray for Shimari before he leaves the platform. I'm going to ask you guys at this point, if you wouldn't mind, could you just uh, raise your hands forward as we pray for the Holy Spirit to watch and guide over Shimari's future? That's it. Don't be afraid. Just, just raise your hands forward. Thank you. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for sending Shimari to this church. We thank you for the gifts that you've given him 
and we are so grateful for his willingness to share those gifts with this community. And so we pray that you would watch over him as he enters into this next chapter in his life. Continue to guide him, instruct him, and bless his future as he continues to do all sorts of ministries in new and powerful ways. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah, of and at this point, that's uh, the end of the announcements uh, for Church Life. So at this point, I invite the, the children to come up for the children's story, and the adults can get up and uh, greet each other at this point. Thank you. Well, invite all the children to come on down. Good morning. How are you doing? I saw some of you in Sabbath school earlier. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm always asking questions. That's what teachers do, right? How many of you like to do jigsaw puzzles? Do you do jigsaw puzzles? This is kind of an old-fashioned thing. I know you guys all have iPads probably, but I love to do jigsaw puzzles. What do you think? Does this one look easy or hard? Hard? It is a puzzle. Do you like to do puzzles? Yeah? Can you tell me what you think this puzzle is going to be? You're right. It is an outside puzzle. But it's kind of hard to tell what it is when it's all little bitty pieces. What do you think, Claire? Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah? It's hard to tell when it's not all joined together, huh? But if I tell you or show you the picture, you can tell what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Well, this jigsaw puzzle with all of its many pieces reminds me of the church. There's lots of people in the church, right? Are they all the same? No, they all come in all kinds of different types of people. But you know what? Jesus has said that he wants everybody to be in unison or unity. Do you know what that means? What does unity mean? You can be unique, definitely. We're all unique. But what does being in unison mean? Mm, maybe being like in a group. It's kind of like being in sync. In sync. Now, we can't always agree with each other, but what we can agree with is that we need to all get along. And sometimes that's hard because there's all kinds of different people and they all have their own ideas. So when we go to church, there may be some things that we don't like. You know, maybe we feel like we're sitting too long. Maybe we don't like the music that got chosen that week. Do we grumble and complain about it? No, because if we grumble and complain, that doesn't show Jesus' love, does it? 
showing Jesus' love is the most important thing that the church has to do. And just like the puzzle, if it's not all put together, you can't tell what it is. If we are not loving and kind to each other, then the people that don't come to church with us won't know that we love Jesus. If they see us fighting and there's divisions in the church, they won't know that we love Jesus. So we're like the puzzle. We have to be in unity. Jesus says he wants us to love others just as he has loved us. What do you think? Let's say a little prayer. Dear Jesus and God, thank you so much for your church you've given us. Please help us to love and be kind to each other so that we will show the world how much they are loved by God also. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now those of you that are four and up may quietly walk to children's church. Those of you that are not will go back to your parents. Thank you. As the deacons are coming to the front to collect the offering, let's talk a little bit about a saying that you hear sometimes in the healthcare world. And the saying goes like this, no margin, no mission. Which means that if the healthcare institution doesn't cover its expenses and doesn't have some financial margin of safety, the healthcare institution can't accomplish its mission. We can transfer that over to the church world. In the church world, no margin, no mission. If the church doesn't cover its expenses and doesn't have a margin of financial safety, the church can't accomplish its mission. The offering today is for church budget. Please give generously. The deacons can now collect the offering. Thank you.
Lord, we pray that you'd use these funds to accomplish your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
morning. Now is the time for our prayer. And so I invite you if you have any you know, special requests, uh, special petitions that you want to bring before God uh, this morning, I invite you to come forward uh, and stand with us here in the front uh, so that we can pray with you. So I invite you to come forward if you'd like at this time uh, while we sing our prayer song number 671. who are able, please kneel with me. This morning, Heavenly Father, as we bow our bodies before you and we lift our voices to you in song and in prayer, we ask that, the, that your name will be glorified in all we say and do this day. Many of us are feeling lost, alone, or afraid, but you seek us out. May we, this very morning, hear your voice calling out to us and beckoning us home. And to that end, we pray that an extra portion of your spirit would be poured out on our preacher. And as we open the scriptures together, may that Holy Spirit also bind us together in one heart and one mind. May we be joined together as one flock and even as one body, the body of your Son, so that through him, with him, and in him, we might offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Tune our minds to know what is true, and our hearts to desire what is good, and strengthen us in body and spirit, so that we can live according to your word. Almighty, ever-living God, Lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is found in Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. I am transformed and transfixed because of the beautiful music that has been given. I could not but think of the words of Augustine 
in describing such an event. He said that music is the art of controlling sounds properly. Not in a manner that is necessarily technically correct, but in a manner that satisfies the moral sense. And so I'm on my way to heaven this morning. My spirit is fed. My moral sense is in a resting mode. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is not only the finisher of our faith, but who is finishing our faith through his limited mercies and through the mystery and the ministerium of his grace. Some weeks ago, I had to travel to Austin, Texas and rent a car. And as I got into the car and put the key in the ignition, turning on the engine, there was a flash in the dashboard. There were lights, there were vibrant shimmering lights, colors of orange, green and yellow. But there was a particular color that struck my attention and it was the red light, the engine light, the light that would remind me when I need an oil check or an oil change. And so when I consider the text this morning, I am wondering who this David is. David, the son of Jesse, is a poet, a musician, a sweet singer in Zion, a scholar who received this education at the University of Sheepkeeping. When I think of this text, David is seeing a portrait. And down at the base of this portrait, there are people walking on an ascending road towards Jerusalem, the epicenter of worship and praise. But in the background, we see people coming towards this road as they're snaking their way towards the Jerusalem road. The interesting thing that was happening, they are singing, there is laughter. In some cases, there is dance. Considering that these tribes were not always kind to each other, David is so amazed that he coins these words, how good and how pleasant it is when men dwell together in unity. It is like the oil running down. It is like the oil being poured on the head. It is like the oil running down the beard, the beard of Aaron, the first priest that came down the collar and the skirts of his garments 
consecrating the whole body. Perhaps if David were here, he might just think that an oil change may be on the horizon for these tribes who don't usually get together or get along. But I would hasten to say to you this morning that this is no ordinary oil. Certainly this is not cooking oil to keep the eggs from sticking to the skillet. This is not W240 oil to silence the screeching of metal against metal of a wagon train. And ladies, this is certainly not oil of Olay, the oil that slides down the body and disparages white ash that finds its presence because of the hard water we experience here in Southern California. But this oil has three very, very important characteristics. This oil was a precious oil. It was an oil that represented the presence of God's Holy Spirit. It is an anointing oil of those who are called by God for his service. This oil anticipates the baptism of the Messiah. Jesus Christ, who would be anointed by baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not only is this a precious oil, it is a fragranced oil. It is an oil that is peppered with myrrh and cinnamon and calamus and acacia. But this is also a poured oil. I was struck by this idea that the oil was poured. Immediately when I thought of it being a poured oil, I thought of an oil that is intentionally directed to a particular space. And when that oil leaves its receptacle, a stream is formed to the designated place of where the oil is going. This oil has flow. But the opposite of a poured oil is the oil spill. When I consider the oil spill, the character of the oil spill I found to be um, an oil that is misdirected. It is, an, it is an oil that splits off from the body and leaves the receptacle. It is unintentional. This oil runs on its own, goes where it wants to go, falls where it wants to fall, flows where it wants to flow. I could not help but think, ladies and gentlemen, that today in our world, we have an oil spill. There is an oil spill in our land. It is an oil that mutilates and violates the terrain of unity and togetherness. It is an uncommon oil. It is an unworthy oil. It is a crude oil that is not refined. This oil projects the chilling effect of fear and distrust among a community of people who really just want to live together in harmony. This oil has a pungent odor One of the pungent odors 
is something called partisan politics, where the end justifies the means. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. It is an oil that is built on ideology and that seems to disparage morality. The other pungent odor is an oil that smells of discrimination against differences, where the goal is for everyone to walk in lockstep for the good of those in control. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. And then there is the oil of tribal and primal misbehavior, where we default to strife and envy, selfishness, ambitions, dissensions, and outburst. This is an oil that mutilates and violates. The Apostle Paul agrees with this when he reminds us that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. The carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life. So the question then, how do we get an oil change? There's a property in oil called viscous. Viscous. Uh, viscous is a property that resists anything that would try to separate the ingredients that make oil what it is. If there is a culture that wants to separate the ingredients of oil, viscous meets it at the door. I would suggest to you, my friends, that we need, as a society, an oil change. Jesus would say, if you want an oil change, to ask. And it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it would be open to you. How pleasant it is when men dwell together in unity. It is like the oil, the precious oil. It is like the fragrance oil. It is like the oil that is poured and not spilled. Dr. K, a phil, a theologian, a scholar, has three suggestions for those of us that want an oil change. He says that an oil change looks like association. And I quote him, we must come together because there can be no unity in solitariness or being alone. We are many members, but one body. Association condemns all separatism for separatism's sake. And then there is variety. There is a unity in the mere repetition of the same things as a heap of sand or a flock of sheep. But unity, unity requires harmonized varieties. Music is not a monotone, he says, but it is harmony. In a true Christian society, there must be variety of thought 
variety of feelings, variety of opinion, variety of age, variety of position and character. Finally, he says, there must be liberty. There is no unity where there is no freedom. There is no real agreement, or rather no real agreement exists where none is allowed to disagree. Again, I would say to you, we need an oil change. We need the daily moment by moment pouring out of God's Holy Spirit. Again, we get it by asking. We get it by seeking. We get it by knocking. What does this oil look like or smell like or feel like when we have a change? When we have the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit in unity, we will experience the myrrh of love mixed with the sweet cinnamon of gentleness and the sweet calamus of meekness, mixed with the sweet cassia of long-suffering. There's an old African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. How good and how pleasant it is when men and women, old people and young people, boys and girls, dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil that is poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down as Aaron's beard, on the collar of his robe. That is an oil change. And so my friends, as we go through this coming week, Take time to smell the myrrh of love. Take time to inhale the sweet cinnamon of gentleness. Inhale the sweet calamus of meekness. Take time to inhale the cashier of long suffering. And be sure, moment by moment, as you turn the key in the morning of your waking, in the, in the consciousness of your self-awareness, as you watch the dashboard flash with the lights in your consciousness, be sure to know that your oil will be changed if it is poured on you by the Holy Spirit. May God richly bless you. And now would you stand as we sing our closing hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, hymn number two.
Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.